Hello guys, here's a review of some new kits. Right, so the first one we have is a brand new spanking model from Freedom Model Kits. Uh, as company, it's a, I think it's a, yeah, a model company based in Taiwan. Now, I didn't realise Freedom Models made a few more kits before this one. Because, well... They do obviously some other jet kits in different forms, but when this came on the scene and I first saw it, I thought I'd just have to have it because it was such a nice kit. Um, obviously a subject that you don't hear about. So obviously this is the uh, Curtis Hawk 3, and it's based on mainly the Chinese Air Force versions that you see here. Uh, it's 148th scale, and obviously it's a plastic kit of the aircraft, obviously. Duh. I'm waffling on it. Anyway, the item number is 18009 if you're interested. And I have to say, some nice box art. It's just a shame. It's just. Obviously, it's the one's going this way and the other two are going that way. But um, that's how it is. Uh, obviously, on the sides, you do get plenty of options. Now, if I ask guys, I've already been through this kit uh, along with a UK Scar modeler. And um, Marty's military modelling, obviously Ian and Steve. Now we went through this kit, and we have to say we are both, in, well, all three of us are impressed by what we see. So, but um, obviously it's something that I'm definitely interested in building. So, no else. So it's a brand new kit um, from the Taiwan, from Taiwan. I have to think about that one. Uh, obviously, obviously it says a side age restrictions. I think it's 14. Don't eat. Don't drink, don't do anything with your paint or whatever. Yeah, I'm rather than that. Anyway, let's open the box and let's see. Right, so first thing I do need to mention, guys, is um, when we first opened the box, everything would looked as though it was just bundled in. So we kind of rearranged everything back to how it used to look. Well, it looks pretty nice. Okay, so first off with the instructions, we do have some that. And obviously we got the kits here. Obviously, it's not many. You get two sprues in this. You get some nice decal options. Now, one thing I do want to point out, guys, that we see here, we get some nice decals. We get two decal sheets. Now, a huge decal sheet there. Now, you're probably wondering what's this. Well, this, guys, is a key feature what you get with the kit. This is a little resin pilot. Very nice. So, we'll get on to that. We have our clear pieces here, some photo etch, some. Uh, rubber bits, I can't remember what the cord has gone from my mind and we have obviously a poster so that's really it, I'll just put them to a side, we'll come back and see them in a bit, we'll go through the instructions first okay so this is upside down for you guys, I just need to check the camera's still running because it does cut out some time okay so obviously it's upside down, I'll just read what it says it says after the development of the US Navy BF2C1 Curtis started working on a new export version called the Model 68 or the Curtis Hawk 3. Changes include cancel of the tail hook, change, change back to standard wooden wing and new engine, a left side weapon change from a 30, 30 cal machine gun to 50 cal M2 machine gun to increase firepower, the three bladed instead of two blades. Curtis model, well, Curtis produced a total of 138 Hawk 3s. One of the Model 68 stayed in America. Six, uh, another model was sold to Turkey. In 1935, Thai Air Force brought 24, and, we, and so did and the Argen, Argen, Argentinian Air Force brought 10. The largest buyer was the Republic of China Air Force, who brought 102 models from 1936 to 1938. The Curtis Hawk 3, what's the Curtis Hawk? Rambling now. So most combat during the Sino Japanese War around Shanghai and performed well against the Japanese biplane fighters and bomber at the start of the war. Alone on August the 14th, 1937, the Royal after <laughs> Republic of China Air Force damaged three Jap Japanese G3M bombers and shot down another two using Hawk 3s. On the following day, the Royal of Royal of Chinese Air Force even managed to shoot down 16 Japanese attackers. Late last year, Mitsubishi A5M 
started engine combat, the Hawk 3 was quickly outclassed. After the spring of 1938, Hawk was replaced by I-15s and I-16s and transferred to training units or took place on duty of nighttime air patrol. Not until 1941, the United States Lend-Lease Policy, Inclusion Republic of China, and provided lots of new fighters. The Curtis Hawk 3 can be finally be decommissioned. So that's really it, guys. So I guess one side is in Taiwan, the other is in English. So there we are. Obviously, that's a bit of information. If you want to pause that and read through that, but there we are. Okay. Have a look at the instructions. It does see um, we have plenty of, oh, well, not plenty of plastic, but two sprues on the plastic bits. Now, I think um, they must have done a mistake here because it's actually re lettered two of the small parts on there, so they must have put an, forgot to put a number onto those two. Now it does say uh, that obviously there's a cover, was well, a picture shade, I should say, of um, uh, not used. Uh, it looks like we use all the parts, guys. So there's no plastic going to be wasted there at all whatsoever. And of course we got our colour callouts on the front there. So a bit of a variation there. Okay, so step one is the cockpit. Uh, well, I can say that a lot of detail does go into a small compartment, just these steps here. And we do get a nice, by the looks of it, two versions of instrument panels going in, followed by this bit. Now, apparently C8 is silver colour. Now, I'm not too sure whether it was actually that colour or whether it was in the US uh, dark green colour. So I have to research on that. Anyway, detail is nice. You actually do have a trigger on the guns there. I don't think you have any um, photo extra seat harnesses, so that's out of the way. Okay, so the next bit we start with the engine. The I can't remember what type of engine it is. It's one piece box of it, and we have the exhaust system going on the back. We have the ignition harness, but not uh, the ignitions, are they? Are they the um, oh god, what are they called again? Spark plug cables, I can't, you know what I mean. Spark plug cables along with a... Do I, <laughs> I really do need to upgrade on my engine skills, guys. Okay, so that goes into the back there. So we've got accumulator in the bottom here. And then we have the um, exhaust stacks going out to the side. And then that is the engine done. That was a horrible noise. Okay, so the next part we is, well, we is, is we move on to the wheel. Um, I think, yeah, so retractable gear control, a bit like they had in the Wildcat. So we've got this installed in here. Um, sadly, a lot of detail you won't see. Go to the underside. I think this is where we put some radiators there and that lot of air intakes, followed by your tailwheel. There's two. Different tail wheels going to the back here, obviously two versions, and now we have to apparently drill some holes in the side here for the cables to go through and the two fuselage halves together. To the other side, uh, top of the engine cowling going on, followed by some plates. No, actually, actually it does give you an option whether you do want those parts open or closed. That's really good, so you can actually see the detail inside. First time I've seen that. Hmm. Not bad. So anyway, we have the tail and the two alien rods going in here, followed by the, the control parts, if you have the photo etch or the plastic pieces going in there, followed by the radial engine, the two uh, machine gun barrels going to the front there, followed by some, I think they're just adjust sight, sight adjusters, I don't know, followed by the cowling being fitted on. Okay, so it's a very fast build, by the looks of it. Okay, so top underneath, put the bottom part in we saw in the first bit followed by the under the fuselage and two um, aileron yeah two aileron holders at the bottom now trying to think of the words followed by the two bottom wings your struts going on there including your gun sight and then underneath we have the top wing going on fitted with the control surfaces again onto the top wing and it does give you the option of whether to make some, I believe they are little uh, bombs, I believe. Bomb racks underneath, followed by some lights, landing lights on the bottom there. 
Okay, so this is where things get tricky. Uh, most of the photo etch is given up in photo etch parts. Now, ooh, I really do not know whether to do that in photo etch or whether to do that in the um, stretch sprue, try and make it a lot more metalised. I do not know whether that's a good idea or not. Okay, so that's the first part that's going on there. And then we move on to the second part, which gives it obviously inside the wings and that lot. So a lot of detail and these little tiny pieces. Okay, so then we apparently we remove these pieces and put in some other photo etch bits into there, followed by the control well, the cables holders, I believe they are, hold all together. Also the canopy going on now. I wasn't I'm not too sure how that canopy works. It looks like half a canopy really. Don't know why they did that, but hey ho. Followed by the landing gear. Now this looks really detailed because you actually do have um spring load I don't not spring loaded, but they made to look it. So that's that. And last but not least we have the wheels going in place, followed by some I don't know what that is, it looks I don't know whether it was some kind of, um, I don't know, it just looks part of the fuselage, but I really do not know what that was for, guys. So if you know what this little round circle that was underneath the aircraft, please let me know because I have no idea. Followed by the tyres going in here, the wheels. Now you do have an option where to put a drop tank underneath as well. Well, is there a drop tank? I don't know. Followed by the prop. As simple as that, guys. A lot of detail for a small little aircraft. Now I move on to the marking options. Right, so here's the first two. We have the Thai Air Force, Thailand, obviously 1940. And I have to say, this is a really attractive colour scheme, guys. White surfaces underneath, followed by mid-tone sand, and two different dark greens on the back here. Or you can have the Argentinian Air Force, which is all silver painted. Okay, so there's the first two there. Oh, Oh, there we go. Obviously, this was based on the Chinese version, so you do get your Chinese options. Now, I'm just counting up. We've got three here. One, two, three, four, five. Is that right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, eight versions of Chinese, so they do give you plenty of options. And they're mostly all the same colour olive drab, apart from this one, which has a blue underside. I'm not sure which one to do yet. I do like this one, the main one in the middle. Or we can have this version, which had the Chinese writing underneath Windsor. Hmm, looks really cool, but sadly most people won't see that. Sadly. So there are the options of what to do. And... Right. Let's get on with the other pieces. Okay, so here's the photo etch parts, guys. Uh, I do need to actually bring you in a second. Bear with me a second. Okay, so I'm just showing you the tiny detail parts. Now, one thing I do like is all in resealable bags, all the tiny parts are. So that's really good. Now, the photo etch, this is the first time having a look at the parts out of the bags, guys. So you will see a lot. Okay, so... It looks like most of this is control surfaces, your ignition cables, a bit of radiator, yeah, part of your gun mechanism there. That's it. That's it, guys. Most of it is that. And last but not least, you have your polycaps. I did remember the name of it. Your polycaps going on there. So that much photo etch, um, it would be nice if we did have some uh, seat harnesses going the copper there, but the detail you see in a minute, I think most of you guys will be really appreciated. Okay, so that's that one done. Right, let's have a look at this. Okay, so this is the resin pilot. Now, most of guys will actually struggle to find a cast Chinese or Republic of China Air Force figure. And I have to say, looking at this figure, he is so detailed. Let me see. Oh, took your shot there. Let's see if I Okay, that's the furthest I get, yeah. Okay, so this is the figure. Now, 
you can see just by that part, I'm trying to locate on this, okay? So, just by looking at this figure, he is really, really detailed, especially the arms. Now, notice why his arms are holding his other glove. So, I'm guessing that's it. And you do actually get a bit of uh, paper in here to show how to paint him, obviously. So, obviously, there are your colours, what you need, and which part goes where. Obviously, difference between the arms. So, it's a really nice kit. Really, really nice figure to go in there. If you like your painting skills and you like painting your figures, I believe that will be really nice to paint. Very nice to paint indeed. Without dropping them, let's put them back in these parts back in the bags. Because resin figures are really better equipped. Okay, so that's that. Uh, right, decals are here. Right, so this is a receivable bag. Am I... Yeah, two seconds. Apologies guys, focus you there. Right, let's have a look at the back. If I can get open. <sighs> what do they hold these down with? Okay, right. Jesus. Okay, they really hold these down quite a bit. Okay, so not resealable, okay. I learnt my lesson there. Right. Okay. So like I said, we do get the mark options. These are the Chinese versions. Now we do get quite a bit now by lots of things. Uh, the carrier films on this guy, I must admit, look very, very thick, I must admit. Uh, you can virtually see them, if I go across the light there, You can, I think you'll be able to see them across there like that, how thick they actually are. But so I think a quick, like a really strong setting solution would be needed to put them in. But nevertheless, you do get a lot of marking options for your Chinese markings. And nevertheless, you get obviously your Argentinian as well as, um, oh actually... That's really nice. Um, I don't know what that is. It looks like a spirit animal or something for the Thai version going on in there. And of course the, the Argentinian Air Force markings in there. So, like I said guys, the, the decals obviously do look very thick, but then again you can't really judge a book by its cover. Oh, actually, it may, it may be receivable for the time being, but... You never know. Okay, so that goes back in there. This bit goes back in there. Apologise this takes so long, guys. It's just I do obviously want to be careful when putting stuff back in the bags, obviously. Obviously, it's being a new kit. I don't want to damage anything. Right, okay, so that's done. We can actually look at the parts now. So, there we go. Look at the first part, which is... I'll take this one. Okay, so are they receivable? No, the bags are not resealable, guys, so we'll have to cut these open. I think I have you too close in there. Yes, I do. Bring you out a bit more. Obviously, be careful not to cut the plastic, because it's very tightly packed in a vacuum form bag. Okay, so anyway, this is the first sprue. Now, whew. To tell you the truth guys, this ain't so bad. It's a, you know like the type of plastic you get with the, uh, what do you call them? The uh, World War Toons model kits from Meng. I think they're from Meng or Tiger model, I can't remember. It's like that pretty much. And the plastic is moulded detailed. They've got, I'm just looking at this fuselage half here. I'm going to show you this, guys, because we've got some nice detail going on in here. Let me try and bring it up and then see if we... Come on. 
try that. There we are, that's better. Okay, so can we see the moulding along the bottom of the framework here is nicely done as well as the fabric and the same on the other side as well. You also got um uh I think these are just air outtakes, I believe, to let air cool through. And of course, this is the part we were saying about earlier that can be open or closed for shell sure, mechanism off in there. But nevertheless, the rest of the wing structure is all nice and fabricated. So if you love painting your fabricated wings, especially underneath the there, that air intake part we're on about. So if you really do love your parts on an aircraft, oh, actually. Right, inside the air intake, here we have some uh, injector pin marks and uh, they can easily just be sanded off. It's not too bad guys, not too bad at all. Okay, so you will be out of focus for a bit. I'm just taking the time to do this one here. So these are your tiny little pieces. Okay, so like we said, not a lot going on at all. Well, we are, but here we are. Parts are done. Oh, not the camera a bit. Okay, so here we are. These are the tiny little pieces. Now, wow, guys, wow, we. Then we can see the detail on the wheels there. But we do have some actually uh, rivet holes there for where the, the rim and that sits in. Obviously, our engine going on there. All the cylinders look nice and detailed. You can't see any flash anywhere whatsoever. So that's a really nice touch. We also have, oh you might hear me breathing heavily, I'm out of breath to truth guys. Okay so there's the nutrient panel there. Going off into tiny little pieces. Obviously we've got our wing, our tail wheels and our ailerons, they are looking really fab. Now obviously underneath we do have the cockpit sidewalls going on there. There is a lot of detail in there but it's just kind of a shame that you won't see most of that once it's all in. Okay, so there's your tail wheel pieces. We have some drop tanks, the power prop going in there. This is this little piece I was on about guys, I wasn't sure it's for followed by some nice parts in here of the engine covers, not engine covers, fuselage covers and obviously our little bomb racks there. I'm not sure what this piece is. Mm. I'll have to have a look. Apart from that guys, it is all well detailed and all well moulded. Hmm, not bad at all whatsoever guys, that is a really nice kit. So, oh, that I need a drink after talking about all that. I really definitely do need a drink. Wow, so, what can I say for Freedom Models? Well, it's my first Freedom Model kits. Now, I did um, get this in the Black Friday sale. I don't know if you're having some or countries, it's probably based in America and obviously come over to the UK here. So we, I got this in the Black Friday sale and I paid £32.99 for this kit. And if you have bought brand new, like I saw at Telford, it was only Hanantz who were selling it, uh, this was £40 brand new. So for a 148 Curtis Hawk kit, now I have never seen this aircraft a lot apart from the classic airframes kit. Now, I probably would say um, for the same amount of price you would pay for the Classic Airframes kit, I would say go for this one because nothing wrong with Classic Airframes, they're absolutely brilliant, but if you want a easy model put together, I say you would probably try this one. But apart from that, guys, that is the kit. I'm impressed with this, and I definitely do wish I'd love to start this kit soon. It's a real nice kit. So apart from that, thank you very much for watching guys, happy modeling, take care, hope you enjoy the review, and I'll see you again in another one. So with that, cheers, thank you, and goodbye for now.